Live rule renewed. You vindicated, bro. You stood strong on being righteous. You called out these demons. Salute to you. Much blessings. So all those who question you now need to pay homage. My cash app is choke no joke. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they said need to pay homage. My cash app is joke, no joke. Listen to Ra La Rue Renew. You heard me? <laughs> Y'all thought it was a game. Man, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about wisdom about getting gray hair you done seen some things you know what i mean it's always the young people and experienced people that doubt you but that wisdom told you told you be cabell tell him lady virgo what up ul king i see you Iris stepped in the building. Miss A. Matthews is past your bedtime. What you doing up? All right. We got the grand one in the building. You already know. D. Rich in the building. Leslie V. Rip Striker. Okay, salute, Rip. Mandy's 20. Man, choke no joke. I'm in the building, y'all already know. Let me go grab my phone and put out these notifications on Instagram. Oh, we going about to get into it, y'all. We about to get into it. Don't forget the Hip Hop Nucleus is out right now on Amazon, Tubi, Apple TV, Stash. All right, you know what it is, man. Joke, no joke. Come on in, come on in. Come on in, come on in. St. Louis in the building. I'm doing this one tonight this late for my people over on the other side of the water, over in Great Britain, Africa. You know what I'm saying? They just waking up. They just finding out about this. Salute to y'all. So they, they, not, they don't even know what's going on. They waking up to this. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to everybody over in Ireland, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Germany, all right, France, London, Italy, Paris, wherever you at, you know what I mean? Brixton, all right, Hyde Park, wherever you at. Choke no joke, we are here. All right, let's get into it. But it's cheaper, not many chicks Frying like divas out west Every chick's a model like Eva And you know I'm far from believing her So I'm g her like she g me Banging in LA is a different thing At the end, you either dead or on the bang Getting out, doing better things On Sunset, where they hang Hollywood, where they hustle for change Times Square here is the same No matter where you go, you'll find the lane On the west, they kick it with cane On the east, trees the souls you think East coast, west coast East coast, west coast Grab your raps, roll it up If you rap, west coast East coast, west coast East coast, west coast Grab your glasses, take a toast If you rep East Coast When I'm on the West and I'm doing my thing Don't offer me coke, all your nose I bang Friends don't offer other deadly things Thanks for the hospitality, we'll still hang I won't judge you, leave me as I came On the road to success, top of the game Eat all the finer things in the food chain Teach my kids to do the same With the East Coast West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your raps, roll it up. If you rap, West Coast, East Coast, 
West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your glasses, take a toast. If you rep East Coast, gotta love life and all for wonderful things. Being the travel is a privileged thing. Came back to the East, air wasn't fresh. Streets filled with trash, various people in the ass. It's easy to tell who's up a middle class. Police and racism, same as crash. Back to where they not social, where they less vocal. When they don't know you, be careful. Show you around the East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your wraps, roll it up. If you rap, East Coast, whether East Coast, West Coast, East Coast. West Coast, pop your bottles and toss the cork. If you rep West Coast, both coasts are known to give you fame. Got Papa Ross, he's playing cameras your way. Got you bobbing and weaving like Cassius Clay. Most thugs turn Muslim in older days. Change their name to a law they pray. Probably till they decay. This go out to the east and west. For big and pop, y'all, let's connect. Brother West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your wraps, roll it up. If you rep West Coast, whether East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. You can't get the West without the ES. So it's manifested that we connect. Uh. You know what it is. Joke, no joke, learn from mistakes, baby. You know what it is. Greg on the track. Rest in peace, baby. Either war, we in now. You know what it is. Joke, no joke, Choke, no joke, cheeky choke, no joke. Choke, no joke, cheeky choke, no joke. You know what it is. We here now, for real now. Man. Now, if you like 30 and younger, this is probably a little more exciting for you on the excitement level. But, uh, If you like in your 50s, late 40s, this ain't really hitting you yet. It, 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 it feel like it's fake. It, it's surreal if you like 45 and up. It's like you're seeing this on the TV, on the news, and it's like, it's, it's, it's like fake. You think like, you're like, nah, this is this really happening? At least that's what it feels like for me. For years, I've been in this entertainment industry, right? Think Puff been on my radar, pause, for probably about 91, 92. I think that's about the time I started hearing his name. 
So which saying that I've seen this dude come from an intern working to becoming a CEO to a mogul, right? From a thousandaire to a multi-millionaire to a fake billionaire. So this dude go from a producer to a rapper, to an actor, from being the dancer first, one with our power and then became one of the most powerful people within our culture. And a lot of us all help elevate them to get them up there, right? BB Bay. <laughs> What's that? Shantae, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for the love. Um. Uh, Like I said, we all we all contributed. Whether you bought a record uh, from Bad Boy, so Sean John clothing, whatever artist you liked it, we all contributed to his success. Some more than others. With success came great power. Right? Now, y'all all know, well, I ain't gonna say y'all all know, cause some of y'all, welcome to the show. I'm the legendary videographer, producer, director, choke no joke. Been producing, directing in this entertainment industry. Uh, and done modeling, acting, videography. I've been in a couple of puff videos. Uh, so throughout the years, I've been through this entertainment industry. Some of y'all may know me. Some of y'all may be seeing me for the first time. But that's who I be in a quick nutshell. All right, let me get back on track. But... When I say a lot of y'all know my stance on the industry or know my story, for the predominantly most of y'all do, for, but those who don't, I'll uh, catch you up. So, like I said, I've been in this entertainment industry for the last 30 years professionally, right? But I've been around hip hop before it started professionally. So I always say hip hop, my little brother, because I'm older than it, right? But once I got into the entertainment industry and I started elevating and I started my work was being recognized as great and I started begin becoming popular and my name started ringing and I became uh, forced to reckon with. Um, and I became legendary in my right as one of the first people to run around with a video camera around the world, not around the states or uh, a city around the world documenting it and when nobody else was doing it like that and was looked at and clowned for what i was doing uh the world finally caught caught up and 
Now, many of y'all got cameras and some of y'all are even following people just to film their butt for them to post it. You just walk with a phone and you walk behind a chick and she just wants you to film her ass and that's your job when i was in concerts and interviewing people like snoop dogg backstage mystical 50 cent at the tunnel so on and so forth right so i've been in this a long time and i've been around them all right but diddy is one of the people that in the beginning i was around seeing seeing him elevate and come up now once I got to a certain level, I started to see it was a lot of weird activity going on. And I kept trying to get seduced into homosexuality. And this is about the time I got to BET, which is about 2005. For those who know, I worked at Rockefeller for years, I think like three, four years. And that was just a bunch of street guys. So it wasn't none of that there. It was only until I went into television that I started being more conscious of this lifestyle. Not saying that it wasn't going on when at Rockefeller, because when I was at Rockefeller, we traveled in with a bunch of dudes so when we would show up to parties where these niggas was with the funny shit, they would <laughs> scatter and go in rooms in different places. They wouldn't, or they wouldn't let us in or things like that. So it's like a bunch of street niggas, like a, with a, like Dave traveled with like a entourage of niggas and shit. But, a bunch of straight niggas, not a bunch of funny niggas and shit. So the funny ones were uncomfortable when we came around, you know. So I didn't get that experience of what's going But now when I look back at hindsight, I understand some of the places we went, why everybody cleared out. <laughs> Right. So um like I said, by BT I'm conscious because it's a lot of weird activity going on. So to make a long story short, as I got uh trying to get seduced, tested, and decent proposals, uh things like that started hitting that glass ceiling i started to realize it was because of my sexuality i wasn't playing in the rain there games excuse me that a lot of my peers was and then i started noticing more and more and more and then i started seeing that it, it was clickish or cultish or fraternity-ish, or sorority-ish, however you want to notice. And over the years, I was able to pinpoint that this was an uh, underground uh, sex fraternity or sorority, because uh, fraternity is men, sorority is women, but it's a mix. Right. So some of y'all call it the Illuminati, some of y'all call it the gay boule, whatever. I I think black excellence, even though black excellence is uh what we would consider us would consider an achievement. I think when we saw the black excellence crew, allegedly those are a lot of the people that's into that uh which would allege be these allegations of freak offs and uh the secret gay parties and things like that right so 
today, we did eat house getting rated. One, I predicted that a while back. Uh, due to the fact that I wonder why I get mad, so unless I'm not going to say names. <laughs> due to the fact that uh, a lot of former bad boy employees were going on YouTube and doing a lot of interviews and talking about a lot of criminating shit. Now, I know a lot of y'all may think that this raise stems from these lawsuits. These lawsuits are part uh, a strong part of the raid, but the lawsuits come on the tail of former employees of bad boy telling these stories that were very incriminating, very incriminating, right? And I told y'all, you know, when two of these people was simultaneously going up there and then they started talking about uh they knew about the bottles and being spiked and or you know they was around when it may have been um uh, freak offs or some people some women may have been assaulted um It's, it's, it's numerous things, right, that uh, numerous incidents. I, I don't want to pick out certain things, but these stories, right, may have given not only validation to these people that came out later, but the people that came out later and filed these lawsuits, these stories and these people telling these stories may have gave them the courage to come forth and, and tell their story as well, being that, you know, certain former workers uh, were, was telling stories and stuff, right? So, I believe that a lot of these stories that was being told piqued the interest of law enforcement agencies, similar to like going on Vlad and doing the same thing, you know, uh, it's no different, you know, like going on Vlad and just keep telling these, these, these stories, you know, and some of the, some of these people that worked for Bad Boy went on Vlad and told stories and other different uh, YouTube platforms. But me, as y'all seen in my shows, I forewarned them that you may be telling these stories that will incriminate Diddy, but you're doing it in a way that you're incriminating yourself, right? So ultimately, one or two things are gonna happen with those type of people either they they will be charged and um as a co-conspirator or they're going to be subpoenaed 
and probably threatened with, oh, if you don't want to testify, you will be a co-conspirator due to the fact that you say that you bear witness to a lot of these allegations. And the fact that you bear witness to a lot of these allegations and you said it publicly, you're going to come and say that in court so you can help us secure this conviction or this indictment, you know, even if it's for a grand jury. And once they start talking about, oh, they don't want to be involved, then that's when they will be like, ah, you know what? The statute of limitations for uh, sex trafficking is none. Um, the New York Victims Act statute of limitations is none. So the Diddy allegations go back from 93, 94 up to today. So if you wasn't nowhere around Diddy from 93 up into 2024, then you are 110% safe. If you worked for Diddy from 93, 94 up into 2024, your ass can fall into this indictment because it starts in 93. The allegations, right? So if he gets indicted from 93, it's almost about them 30 years, right? Any and everybody that worked for him, if their names get mentioned or they saw anything or they was around when something happened, whether it would be with Cassie or any of these four other victims, oh, your ass is new mown grass. Because not only do you got Cassie, if these these uh, allegations that these if these civil allegations to go criminal which is i believe partially the the reason why they ran into his house right it, well not ran into his house got a warrant to search his house because they just can't go up in this house which means they had to get they had to go through judges they had to go through uh a lot of people to convince, uh, to get get this warrant to be able to search several properties, right? So, what my belief is, a lot of the allegations in the civil case, the Southern District uh, Department in New York, because that's who's. Uh, who who um allowed them to uh help them get this warrant uh, homeland security and a lot of four of the cases is in the civil cases is in the southern district of new york so which means that they're probably about to or investigating to see that if the allegations in, in these four people that any of the information that they got from them, can they go in their house and find anything that could co 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 corroborate anything that they say in, in the civil? And if so, being that there's no statute of limitations on sex trafficking and they got the, the New York Sexual Victims Act, Those two, without no statute of limitations, he can have criminal charges brought up, right? And it's whew, for the, the for the sake of they will say it was sex trafficking, 
and he was doing it and uh people were getting paid and oh my god did he Woo, did he 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 if this go criminal if you if you followed the r kelly uh case with me and see me go through that that's how i knew to tell y'all that homeland security was going to come grab this case just like i said right i'm gonna play the video when i said it a few months ago so y'all can see exactly what i said being homeland security was going to get involved due to all these allegations the only difference between r kelly and and um and Diddy is surviving R. Kelly got the attention of Homeland Security. These YouTube interviews about Diddy, you seen it, it even they even brought up a Gene's interview on Jimmy Kimmel and asked Diddy about him with J Lo. Uh, and Will Smith and Jada wanted to have a threesome or whatever on Jimmy Kimmel. Once he got that far and that came from YouTube, it's like glowing on Vlad. Niggas is just up there telling. They tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. And, and they tell him because whatever, whether they don't like him or they know they telling the dry snitch to throw him under the bus, whatever it is, however you look at it, it's just telling. It's, it's the same shit uh, that they doing over there with all the gangsters, all the gangbangers. Niggas is doing roll calls. Yo, man, talk about this dude. Talk about this dude. And they just bringing niggas' names up and talking about crimes and shit that they did. Just that and other. Motherfuckers that ain't even on YouTube. Like, these niggas is on some super fucking throw niggas under the, uh, in jail over there that that's like the new shit with the gang gang uh sector of youtube get up here and tell, tell who what is what's the gang nigga's real name street name what gang he's in what set he's in and what crimes he's in for the police to go start looking into this nigga <laughs> that's the new shit for the gang niggas that supposed to be like some real niggas and shit. Niggas just started some shit called roll call. Let's start calling out gang niggas and telling their street affiliations, what set they from, where they from, and what kind of crimes they did. Whether they the hitter, a stick up kid, a murderer. Yo, these niggas is crazy out here. Like YouTube is just going to send everybody to jail for these motherfucking niggas that ain't smart, that just want to get a check to run their mouth. Right? Now, if these if these go criminal, if these go criminal, the sex trafficking, one of them shits is 25 years, bro. Ask anybody to know the R. Kelly case. R. Kelly got 30 years. For one chick that he slept with in New York. And Paul Harrison, oh, I didn't mean to say your last name. Paul H., good looking, man. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for the donation, right? Um, R. Kelly got 30 years. He slept with one of the chicks in New York. And she said he gave her herpes, whatever. That's how his New York shit stuck. That nigga ain't from New York. And did he from New York? Four cases in New York if it go criminal. You see all them girls, R. Kelly, that all the most 98% of them was all over age, except for the girl, Asriel, she lied about her age. And they railroaded the shit out of him because they wouldn't even let the parents 
uh, be subpoenaed. And they had the text message to prove that they it was entrapment and shit. So this is how I knew the R. Kelly shit is identical to the Diddy shit. It's the same goddamn thing. Just take away the women being uh, a certain age. But the one element that Diddy got is the, the, the alleged drug in the women. R. Kelly was just getting women digmatized. These niggas... They had to take the pussy allegedly. Pardon my French. You know what I mean? They they had to drug and take it. You know what I'm saying? They was bad boys. R. Kelly, he just sing a chick out their panties. You know what I'm saying? But uh the thing is, now R. Kelly traveled with these women, but they was his girlfriends. Did he? is traveling with these women, but he making them sleep with other people, allegedly. He having freak offs, he having orgies, allegedly. And he's traveling from New York, Miami. He got he got the yacht, the Virgin Islands. That's, that's, that is where Homeland Security comes in. You're crossing state lines and they are, Kelly got convicted at it and that was his, his girlfriends. These was his girlfriends. Now he may come back on the appeal. I believe on the appeal he's gonna get at 30 back, but he still got 20 in Chicago. Even if he get a 30 back in New York. Because they got him on the which to me was double jeopardy. The the the, the sex tape that he beat in 2008. They tried him again on it, but federally, and then convict him with the same shit from the last, the same case. But anyway, the thing is, R. Kelly, a lot of his, the, 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 the Homeland Security came in and the sex trafficking came in because Azriel was flying from, uh, and uh, Joyce Lynn, they, they going from LA, to New York, to Miami, I mean, to Florida, to Chicago. So these are, this was his girlfriend, and he got convicted for it. What you think is going to happen to Diddy if if they if this is becomes criminal with this dude uh, Rodney Jr. Young K, thanks for the, uh, the super chat. Appreciate you. Right. What do you think is going to happen when you got this dude, Rodney Jones Jr., saying that he got drugged? A man woke up in the bed with Diddy and two other men. And he traveled with Diddy from Miami to L.A. <laughs> And the Virgin Islands. And we know he's testifying against Diddy. So I believe that from all these civil suits, there's a lot of criminal uh, allegations in these civil suits, like the studio, the shooting, they might have go, they might be running up in these houses to get the criminal evidence for these civil suits and, and, and to, to build the criminal case. They could have went in the house looking for the gun, for for the uh the gun from the uh the shooting at the studio. That could just be one thing they're looking for. Then you got the dude, Rodney Jones Jr. And the reason I talk about him the most, because his shit was just last year. This ain't no case from 20, 30 years ago. He, his is all recent. You know what I'm saying? His allegations is in the last year.
Another thing. Remember, uh, he had video and pictures. The Rodney Jones Jr. do he had video and pictures. They could be going in Diddy House just to take pictures of the rooms that he was in. Like, remember we seen the picture with him with Cuba Gooding Jr. all up on that nigga, like ready to bite that nigga neck. They could go and get pictures of the rooms because remember in the R. Kelly shit, they went and got the pictures of the studio, right? Just to show to, to show the jury that the same pictures in Diddy case, if he was in that red room in Diddy's house, they got they gonna go and take pictures and they gonna they say, is this the room? Is that the same room? Is that the same room? Boom. Right, that's just that's the gun could be one of the things from the studio, taking pictures and getting surveillance footage of the interior of his house to corroborate anybody's story about something that may have took place inside the house. That's that that's another piece of information. Then you got uh, Rodney Jones Jr. and his lawsuit saying that Diddy filmed everything and he had people in compromising positions and that he had a bunch of uh, he had a bunch of content on people and stuff and he taped everything so they could have went and took all Diddy's uh I would think that nigga would have wiped everything clean after all this shit. Like, he had to know this shit was coming down the pipeline, right? But they could have went, took all his uh, surveillance tapes. They uh, they could have, uh, he could have had some home videos, whatever, right? What else? They could have been looking for clothes, anything for DNA. And then there's the other thing. They took Justin, Christian, and whoever that other guy was. Um, they took him in. This guy, I don't know if anybody knows this guy. But I hear he was, he's Diddy's security. Well, he was out there. I don't think he got arrested. I think I see him in Revolt World. Any of y'all know this brother name? But this is out there. As you can see. It's a lot of news outlets out there. I don't know what that brother is, but he's out there so they could be looking for cameras video i'm sure that they, those are the main things that they looking for but now if they find any uh evidence of 
They he could have cocaine in his house. He could have had weed in his house. You don't know what they could have found in there. But I bet you one thing. I bet you the motherfuckers is in there stealing. <laughs> Ooh, it's a nice ring. How many of y'all saw American Gangster? You know how they do. <laughs> Nigga, open the drawer. Oh, shit. So they got a whole drawer full of money. Ladies, lady uh, detectives. Yeah, you know shit gonna come up missing in that type of raid. Dirty, every cop ain't clean, god damn it. And if it's the sexual allegations, you know that that's a movement of people for sexual gratification and the selling of them to other individuals. If he get hit with that criminal, I'm yo, bro. He he's looking to do more time than R. Kelly. I'm telling you, he if he get convicted, he's going to be like, I hate to say this because it sounds so effed up, but not in the same aspect, but like when it comes to being connected to a lot of, a lot of powerful people. Diddy's looking like the black Epstein right now. Like, can you, um, yo, let me tell y'all something, man. If you're not my age, like if you, you, and you in your 20s, you don't understand that Diddy is the epitome of the party guy. He is the Bruce Lee of parties. That nigga is the Michael Jackson of parties. And for the last 20 years, 25 years, he has been throwing the most exclusive parties from the white parties to all kind of events. But all the biggest names in the industry Mostly all of my efforts that sold they sold had party with this guy. So he he's not the, the guy that party with the, the C list and the D list. Jay-Z, Beyonce, <laughs> Oprah's. And, oh, oh, the A-list, Denzel, Jamie Foxx. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Huh. Like, oh. He's Epstein in, in, in Black Hollywood. Epstein had politicians. And, and he got the Black politicians and stuff, too. You know what I'm saying? I don't remember Obama and them really rocking with Diddy like that. They more was running up under Jay-Z and Beyonce. But he got a, a lot of political people that, that was rocking with him too. But... I don't find it a coincidence that this raid happened on Biggie's anniversary of life after death. I don't believe that's a coincidence either.
which leads me to believe that part of this investigation might tie back into the Tupac stuff too. Not that they gonna find any evidence of anything, but I think the Tupac thing is gonna play a part in this too. And the bad part about it, if it go criminal, bro, boy, oh boy. That nigga, they gonna stack so many charges on his ass from 93. Let me uh let me show y'all something that's interesting to me. Okay. Can I get it a little deep real quick? Right? This is March 25th. Well, 6 now. Right? Good morning, everybody over there on the uh, Great Britain side of the water. All right? Um, I'm going to get real deep on y'all real quick, all right? Y'all going to have to bear with me on this one. Uh, I didn't prepare for this, so I'm going to do everything right here on the screen, right? Now... Like I said, I don't think there's no coincidence that this happened on March 25th, right? A lot of these times, these things ain't no coincidence and things be happening for a reason, right? Now, this is going to be a little bit spooky. But I need y'all to follow me, right? I have said in the past that I believe, me personally, that uh, Diddy allegedly is responsible, part partially, 
for Big getting killed, right? Why I believe that, several reasons. Quick, few quick bullet points. One, who in their right mind <laughs> felt it was a good idea for Big to go to L.A. at that time? If you think it was cool, fine. Me, I think it was a dumb idea, right? Two, who idea was it? Diddy's, right? Three, Big wasn't really rocking with Diddy out there, right? He wasn't traveling around with him, this, that, and the other, like that, right? Before they left, they brought him to that party. He didn't get in the car with him. He got separate cars, whatever. That may not even mean nothing, right? Five, big screw puff. And went and did a deal with Atlantic. Signed Junior Mafia. Lied to, to, to Puff. Told them that they was writing their own shit. Little Kim wrote their own shit. He wrote all that. Did that whole album for the most part. And um, screw Diddy out his publishing. And Life After Death was his last album. And he didn't do a deal with Bad Boy or try to even do a deal, a label deal with Bad Boy. He went and did a deal with Craig Common. More than enough reasons for Diddy to have a problem. Now, is that worth killing him? That's uh, that goes that that that's based on the person. Some people would say no. Some niggas say I would beat his ass. Some people would say I would have took him to court. Some say I would have killed that nigga. If he robbed me for all the publishing and then I'll put this nigga on and then he'd leave and go get a label deal for more than that. This nigga done set up shop, shop on the same block as me right next door. After I done put everything into him to make him a star, now this nigga my competition. Mm, yeah, nigga, let's go to LA. I want to take you out. Let's go to LA. Right? Just my belief that it's a possibility that he has something to do with Big Dying. Right? How many of y'all remember the day Tupac died? Can anybody tell me the date that Tupac died? It would if you had a life insurance policy on it. Can anybody remember? There you go. Thank you, RB. Right now, how many of y'all remember what day Big got in that car accident? And messed up his leg with Charlie Baltimore and Little C's in the car. Let me save y'all the time and guess it. That was the same fucking day. The day Tupac died in the hospital is the same day Big Little C's and Charlie Baltimore got in that car crash. Is that a coincidence too?
the same day, same year, same day. Is that a coincidence? Now let's talk about how big and them got into that car accident, right? They go to the Lexus dealer in New Jersey. For some reason, big car wouldn't start. <laughs> So they go to, they they give them a loaner. See, tell the story, a Lumina van, right? He said, big didn't drive. So C's is driving. And he said, and C says, yo, Nigga, we got a Lexus. Why y'all giving us a Lumina van? Give us a Lexus. And Big was like, nah, 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 it's cool. Don't worry about it. You know, we be low key in that. Don't worry about it. It's a good look. It's a look. We live, niggas won't see us. Whatever. Boom, boom, boom. So they get in the car. C said right in the, in the, the dealership, he knew automatically the brakes was fucked up because he crashed right into the guy in front of him in the dealership. He crashed into the car dealer right inside the thing. Boom, hit him. Like, yo, big, these these these, these brakes, they not working, big. Something ain't right. Yo, come on, man, don't worry. Just go ahead, take it. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. As soon as they get on the highway, ah, fucking brakes didn't work. Boom, bash, boom, bang. Nigga just ain't die. Same exact day. That Tupac died. Right? Tupac died September 30th. Right? Big album was coming out that Halloween. Originally, so they say, but when he got into the car accident, that's why he made it a double album because he went into the, the hospital and it was not, it was down. So they say, right? I don't know how true that is, right? But, There is the photo shoot for the life after death. Let me show y'all that. Let me show you the story behind that. My guy, who the? My fellow Americans. Good looking, my guy. I appreciate you.
20 years have passed, but it shocks is still fresh. It's still uncomprehensible. On March 9, 1997, Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. the Notorious B.I.G., was gunned down in the drive-by shooting. It remains unsolved. Even today, at 12.30 a.m., Wallace left the Vibe magazine's Soul Train Music Awards after party at Los Angeles Peterson Autom Automotive Museum. The SUV in which it was traveling stopped at a red light just 50 yards from the from the venue a dark chevy and pilot ss pulled up along the passenger side the driver rolled down his window drew his weapon and fired four bullets struck wallace he was rushed to the nearby cedar sinai medical center and was pronounced dead at 1 15 a.m not long afterward the notorious big rose again the double album life after death Life After Death was released March 25th. It sold 700,000 hard copies almost immediately, jumping from number 176 to number one on the Billboard 200 in the space of a week. Y'all hear youngins hear that? 700,000 hard copies in a week. Do y'all understand that, youngins? That's not streams. That's like somebody giving you 700,000 single dollars. Physically, not streams. Can you imagine 700 people standing, 700,000 people standing online? It sold 700,000 hard copies almost immediately jumping from number 176 to number one on the Billboard 200 in the space of a week. The album's cover art featured the man formerly known as Biggie Smalls in a long black coat and black bowler. He stared us in the face while leaning against a hearse that bore the license place, B.I.G. There were no sunglasses to hide his lazy eye he wore it full and proud, looking over his shoulder as if he already knew. He wasn't smiling, but he wasn't mad. He was just stating the facts from the other side of the grave. It seemed like a prophecy. You know why it seemed like a prophecy? Because guess who prophesied this whole photo shoot? It was a, it was ten dollars a CD. Shit, it was, that was a double CD. That that CD wasn't ten dollars. You tripping? That shit was like twenty. Um, six weeks beforehand, it was a job. Al Bay, one of the biggest photographers, Michael Levine's career. Hailing from South Denver, Levine arrived in New York in 1985. After stint at Parents or uh, Parsons School of Design and an internship with the fashion photographer Francisco Scavelvo, uh, Levine started his own business in 1988. Rick Rubin hired him for his first music gig photograph a heavy metal band Danzig for Deaf America. Now American Records. Levine was the best known for shooting bands such as Nirvana, Sonic Youth, and the Beastie Boys. In the early years, it was hard to cross over into the hip hop scene. He remembered. The look was different, a lot clean and clear. It wasn't supposed to be crazy and wild like it is now. Back in the early 90s, you couldn't get away with doing weird, arty photographs for the urban market. Bad Boy Records had grand plans for the life after death, but the album originally scheduled for a Halloween 1996 release was pushed to 1997. Puffy Combs was very demanding, Levine said. 
he did not mess around. I hired a location scout to find a graveyard. I took photos up to Puffy's office, and he was like, these are terrible. Find a better graveyard. And he was right. They just weren't dramatic enough. We had to push the shoe back a day. We scrambled, and we found a proper graveyard. Established in 1848, Cypress Hill Cemetery is a proper, is as proper as it gets. The graveyard is seated on a predominantly on the border of Brooklyn and Queens and has the majestic views of Manhattan, the Atlantic Ocean, the Long Island countryside, and even the distant blue hills of Connecticut. Jackie Robinson is buried there, as well as Arturo Alfonso Chamon. UB Blake and pioneer actress Rosetta Lenore. Permits were secured a date January 24th, 1997, was set. It was cold and gray. Big was walking with a cane, his left leg shattered in a car accident a month earlier. Those who knew him described him as grumpy but he maintained a professional demeanor throughout. Although the cover had been described as having overtones of Alfred Hitchcock, Levine said he doesn't use references. It's very risky to do that. There's more opportunity for failure without references, but there's a better chance for greatness. In this situation, I was given certain elements. I didn't pick his clothes and I didn't decide the cemetery. I was told, get a hearse. That's all the direction I got. Back in the early 90s, oh, oh. Levine scouted in a location within the cemetery where he could visually tell the story of life after death. I wanted to have some space around the hearse, Levine explained. I didn't want it to feel too cramped. I found the spot, and then we had a smoke machine to give it some atmosphere. Groovy Lou was trying to get the styling right, and Puffy was yelling about the buttons. Puffy kept jumping in. He was like a guy who wanted to be in the picture. He would literally be getting in a lot of the shots with Biggie. Yeah, where those pictures at, nigga? Then during the shoot, Levine asked for another camera. His assistant, Karen Pearson, whispered, it's not in the truck, it's missing. A bag with a bag with fifteen thousand worth of camera equipment had been stolen while they were loading the truck outside of Levine's Fifth Avenue studio earlier that day. I almost threw up, Levine said with a laugh. Fortunately, I had a lot of other cameras. The last thing he wanted was a Biggie. The last thing he wanted was Biggie or Puffy to be aware that anything had gone awry. But the stolen camera bag was not only, but the stolen camera bag not only thing amiss, Levine rem remembered thinking, I need to find something else because the shoot wasn't rendering right in my mind. I wasn't happy with how things looked. At lunchtime, I scouted on my own. I drove around till I found this amazing spot at the top. As soon as he saw the location, Levine see the picture in his mind's eye. He drove back and told Puffy. Surprisingly, he said, okay. We were not in tune, but he trusted me enough to go, Levine remembered. The entourage was assembled and the caravan headed out. Puffy, Biggie, and I got into my Ford Explorer. I had a six-disc player, and it automatically went to Elvis. I don't know what... It is doing in there, but Elvis came on and Puffy was like, what's wrong with you? What do you listen to this for? Biggie was in the back and he said, hey, man, chill out. Elvis was cool. Levine laughed. I thought it was so awesome that Biggie was sticking up for me listening to Elvis. At the second location, Levine set up the shot with Biggie standing in front of what appeared to be endless rows of ghostly tombstones. There's this timelessness to it, said Levine. It takes you on, 
it takes you out into a different realm because it's black and white. His outfits, his outfit looks like it's from the 1800s and his eye is like jacked over. It's a powerful present. It makes you feel like he works there or presides over all the souls. It's like his home. These niggas is crazy, bro. See, you fucking playing with death. By the time the world saw the photograph, Biggie was gone. His death left the image deeper meaning. If you go there to that spot, it doesn't look like that. That's the nature of photography. You can sculpt the image out of a location. That's my challenge, how to make him seem bigger than life. On the most simple level, I want people to look cool as hell. The news of Big E death, of course, caught everyone by surprise. It was shocking, really non-cynical. How do you process something like that? You feel helpless, said Levine. That's one of the things that's so powerful about the photos. That changed the whole demand, the whole dynamic pretty radically. You have a photograph of a man in a graveyard who died violently, violently weeks later. It makes the image more emotionally Latin. It's not just a photo. What's the name of the album? Life After Death. That's crazy. Flirting with disaster. On the 20th anniversary of the death, new a new perspective comes, one that is possible with the benefit of staying alive. 20 years is a long time, Levine reflected. Time is hard to describe until you experience the passing of more time, and then it becomes relative. A kid who is 15 can't comprehend what 20 years feels like. In many many ways the title life after death isn't just about biggie it's about us we are the ones living life after his death the album changed my whole life in a way levine revealed i had been working in new york for 10 years to get to that moment the brilliance of the record alone was enough to be associated with it is a big deal the gravity of his death was overwhelming as far as my photography is concerned, it became a magnet. People wanted to be associated with me because I was associated with him. It shot me out in space. It changed the trajectory of things. It fueled my spaceship and I wrote it for a long time. There's no way Puff could have talked me into this photo shoot either. Or going to goddamn LA. No way. Nigga, I'm not fucking doing no photo shoot in no fucking cemetery and with a hearse. Like, nigga, you what? And you want to take all these pictures with me? Where's the pictures with Puff and, 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 and Diddy? Now, here's some more to it, right? And this thing gets a little spooky, man. Just get this thing. This thing gets a little bit spooky, man. Right? Now, check this out. <sighs> Let me get my calculator for this one. Uh, 
Okay, right now, check this out. The other day we was talking, somebody sent me this uh this thing where it was questioning that allegedly that CJ may be fathered by Todd and not big, right? So after finding out about lavender marriages, um, after seeing Jada Pinkett say how hard and Will wasn't even together for the last six, seven years. As a man that have dealt with women lying to me about uh, paternity, like the first time I went through uh, a paternity test, this girl, I went through a whole pregnancy, bro. And it wasn't my kid. And I brought the kid home to my mom's like, <laughs> my mom's was like, nigga, that is not your baby. Get that baby out of my house. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm exaggerating. But she did say that is not your baby. That is not your baby and shit. And I'm like, mom, why are you saying that? Said, that is not your fucking baby, nigga. I went and got a DNA test. Down on the 161st Street. And my mom's is right. I don't know how the fuck she could tell. <laughs> but I, I promise she ain't look at that baby more than goddamn 60 seconds and told me that was not my goddamn kid. She was dead ass right. Right? So I just seen this dude finesse <laughs> to two times telling the stories is something similar, right? Um, so when it comes to that, I know that women lie. I know this girl, I ain't gonna say her name, but she had two men believing that her child, I won't, I won't say gender, her child, had both men thinking that this child was their father. And she would be going over here, doing Father's Day over there, and then Father's Day over there. Like, yo, it was foul, foul. And she didn't care. Like, I, I, I just I understand, like, how women don't have a conscience when it comes to that. I think they, they be so embarrassed of the guilt that they probably didn't know who the baby was. And by the time the baby comes, it's, it's, they just got to go to the lie with, until they can't, until they can't go with the lie no more. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of women um, try to go to the grave with it. Right? If nobody know, nobody know. Right? So they sent this thing to me and I showed it the other day. Let me see. It might still be on my Instagram. Damn, it's gone. Did I delete it? Shit. Yeah, I deleted it.
Ah, olha aí. So, it was this video here, right? So, they trying to say that the dude Todd is CJ Pops and not big, right? So, I'm like, ah. Here y'all go again, right? I guess. I didn't even consummate because that's like more of a serious marriage. But now the first time we got a real tour and this So, oh God. So, So I'm saying no dot no denying Tiana. No, definitely not. No denying. I would I wouldn't even let me show you. See, when you see them together, I don't know. It's it's like it ain't it ain't nothing you're gonna do to make me not see big face and CJ because <laughs> I'm I'm already conditioned to to feel to look see big face in his face. But I don't I don't see big not getting a DNA test before he died. I just don't. Now do her and do they look alike? No, I feel like she got big eyes. Oh man. He don't got the cheeks like Big Moms and Tiana. He definitely don't got those cheeks. I don't know, man.
Holy shit. Holy shit. This nigga big couldn't even fucking grow a beard. You kidding me? You got to be kidding me. You got to be fucking kidding me. No, you gotta be kidding me. Niggas is almost the same height. They almost exactly the same height, man. Oh, no, 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 no. No. Look at the ears, yo. No way. Look at the ears, yo. Whoa. Shantae, good looking, mate. You got to be, yo, you got to be fucking shitting me. Man, you got to stop this. Wait a minute, man. This nigga look like CJ, bro. Oh, shit. Lips and noses don't match. Fucking eyebrows don't match. Come on, bro. Stop playing with me, man. Stop playing with me, man. Stop playing with me, man. Don't tell me this shit was a lie, bro.
These motherfuckers is played. They played us, yo. They fucking played us. I feel like a fucking fool. I, I, I do feel stupid. On guard. Oh my God, I feel so fucking stupid. They got me. Oh my God, so they look like CJ right here. I feel stupid. Shit. I feel so played. I feel so played. Am I tripping, y'all? Is it me? Am I am I tripping? That yo, bro, is it me? Yo, bro. I'm telling yo, man. Come on, man. They just had the KE in the lot. He was chunk, made him look chunky. It's that chin. It's that chin. Yo, man. Yo, man. Please forgive me. If, I, if I'm wrong, man, please forgive me. I'm sorry. Don't be mad at me. But Lord have mercy, bro. Look at this shit right here. Look at that picture right there, big. That ain't. Look at big moms. Look at their lips. Big moms might have went for this whole shit because that girl had that man money because they were still married. Big Mom's probably went for this because her, that that girl had her goddamn son's money. Man, I'm, hey, man, man. You fucking got to be kidding me, bro. No, don't tell me these niggas, man. No, man. Come on, man. Damn. 
Did they fucking play us, y'all? Yo, ain't shit real. These motherfuckers play us, y'all. These things ain't got the same lips. They don't got the same nose. He ain't got his eyes. Yo, I'm not playing right now. I I, I really feel like, yo, it, it, hey, yo, bro, my nigga. Was this whole shit a lie? Wait a minute, brother. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Come on, man. Y'all playing, man. Y'all playing with us. Y'all playing with us, bro. Yo, y'all playing with us, bro. You mean, yo, come on, man. I feel so fucking played and stupid right now. Look at these niggas' lips. Look at their noses. Look at their eyes. Yo, they played us, yo. Please, man, I, I swear to God, man, on everything I love, please forgive me if I'm dead wrong, man. I'm not. I'm not being funny. I'm not being disrespectful. They played us. This is a sick ass joke, yo. They played us.
I feel so fucking stupid. Oh God. Like I really feel like I got played, you know. I don't know how tall Big Pops was. Man, it's got to be a sick joke. This shit got to be a sick joke, bro. Where did Big look like him at when he was young? When they the same age? Where's the resemblance? Like, no disrespect. Please, uh, Faith, CJ. No disrespect. But look at Big when he was young. It's the same age as him now. Y'all tell me that's his father, bro? Wow, we Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, this motherfucking industry is some shit, bro. Okay. All right. Hold on. When's CJ birthday? Okay. All right, his birthday is October 29, 1996. That is October is what? October, November, December. That's the 10th month of the year, right? So 
So that means I I need the ladies right here. Any ladies in here tonight? Ladies, help me out here. Let me see what ladies in. Here. Cam, what up? Long time. Um, any ladies? Ladies in here. All right. So ladies, right? Y'all help me out here. He was born October 29th, 1996. Right? So what month did she get pregnant? January? January? See, now y'all going crazy. I see January, December, I see March. It's nine months for you to be pregnant. If October is the 10th month, he was born damn near November 1st. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. He, October 29th. Here's your date. All right, the 10th month of the year. Come on, ladies. Help me out here. Late January, early February. February. Late January, early February. February. Tupac died in September. So October, she had the baby. So we was, we saying January, February, late January, late January, early February. All right. That means we have a few ladies in here, okay? February 4th to the 8th. <laughs> All right. Now, Tupac, he was born October 1996. When did Tupac get out of jail? Let's see when Tupac got out of jail. Nineteen ninety five. On his date in nineteen ninety five. So February. February fourteenth, So Tupac got out in February of 1995. She got, so February, 
That can't be true because he was only on for 11 months. Yeah, that's not the right date. When the fuck did Tupac? March 8th. He was transferred from Rikers to Clinton. Let me just put death row bells south Tupac. September 16th, 1995. That sounds right, because he was only home for like 11 months. And he came out in September, and he died September 13th, 1996. Shit. He died a year... Oh, three days before a year, he would have been home. That's crazy. He, ain't even, he wasn't even home a year before he got killed. All right, so let's see when her and Big broke up. So y'all say in February, right? Late January, early February. Let's see when her and Big broke up. When Faith Evans and Notorious Big still together when the rapper died. The Notorious B.I.G., also known as Biggie Small and Faith Evans, were one of the hip-hop hottest power couples. They were married in 1994 rather quickly, only knowing each other for eight days before tying the knot. Hip-hop's hottest couple at that time were both a part of the same record label, Bad Boy Records. Bad Boy Records was the hottest record label back then. The, the couple actually met at a promotional photo shoot for the record label. Excuse me, y'all. Evans was immediately attracted to B.I.G. According to her, his confidence in himself was the attraction. B.I.G. was looking for a ride to Brooklyn and decided to ask her for one. She gave him a ride, and the couple hit it off right away. In the interview with Vibe magazine, Biggie said that he fell fast and hard for Evans. He had this to say to the magazine. I married her after knowing her eight days and i was happy that was my baby he said at the same time with us being so spontaneous we did it backwards now i'm starting to believe that marriage was bullshit now i'm saying like what i know now it could have been all marketing and publicity to blow faith up to Cross marketing it, it, under the same umbrella. The couple was not just considered hip hop's hottest power couple, but more like hip hop royalty because they both worked at the same record label. They were able to spend a lot of time together, both personally and professionally. They both even worked with many of the same artists. Evans wrote many of Bad Boy Records songs. And even some of her husband's music was written by her. Although the couple were inseparable at first and seemed to be madly in love, maybe they rushed into it a little too quickly. Just as fast as they got married, their relationship went downhill pretty fast afterward. 
The major reason for the decline in their relationship and marriage was infidelity on B.I.G.'s part. Evans soon found out about her husband having an affair with fellow rapper Little Kim. Notorious was pretty smart when covering up the affair, although wrong for doing it. This clever way to hide the fact that he was cheating on Faith with the female rapper Little Kim was to ask his wife. <sighs> Little Kim was to ask his wife to mentor his mistress by having her help with her confidence as well as her image in the hip hop community. Pretty smart on his part. Although stupid too, to do something like this to his spouse, right? Once Evans found out about the affair, she was not only embarrassed about it, but was also hurt, of course. The cheating Biggie didn't. The cheating, the cheating Biggie did on Evans put a major strain on the relationship. The affair with Little Kim wasn't the only time Biggie cheated on his wife. He was also at an affair with female rapper Charlie Baltimore. Evans also found out about other women he was cheating with. Knowing that the affairs did, did happen should tell you that the state of the relationship was before and during his passing. During the same interview with Vibe Magazine, Biggie also admitted that the couple did rush into the relationship and marriage too fast. He said, maybe she won't admit it, but I will. We should have got to know each other and then got married. The relationship kind of dissolved, but we're still going to be friends. Because of multiple affairs her husband was having with other women, and right after the album Hit Em Up was released, the once hip hop royalty, Faith Evans and Notorious Big spent less and less time together and their relationship seemed to be fading out rather quickly. They soon began to be in an on, on again and off again kind of relationship and couldn't seem to find their way back to each other as they once were. Biggie Small and Faith Evans spent one last Christmas together. That's December. However, Faye found out he was still seeing many different women behind her back and she couldn't get past the hurt and embarrassment just put on her. Evans, Evans even wrote about spending one last Christmas with her husband and about the affairs he was having in her memoir, Keep the Faith. Soon after all of this went down, Evans found out she was pregnant by B.I.G. On Christmas? No. 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 No, yeah, I said February. Yeah, I said February. Yeah, I said February, bro. Soon after all this went down, Evans found out that she was pregnant by B.I.G. However, he flat out denied that he was the father, not only to hurt her. Whoa, wait, 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 what? What? Soon after all this went down, Evan found out she was pregnant by B.I.G. However, he flat out denied that he was the father, not only to her, but to the public as well which put even more of a strain on their once loving relationship. Once the couple split for good, Evans met another man, Todd Russo, who would eventually become a husband number two for her. That's a lie, bro. 
she knew Char before she knew Big. Allegedly. Although he cheated on multiple times during their marriage, she still loved him, and he still had love for her. They spotted one another when attending the same party one evening at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. Her friends saw him there, too, and asked her to go talk to Notorious. Although she admitted to seeing him, too, she also admitted she was letting pride get in the way of her walking up to him and saying hi, at least. Wait a minute. What? Big died March 9th. CJ was born October 29th, November, December, January, February, March. So the baby was five months old. And Big was saying it wasn't his son. And they see each other and they son five months old and they not talking? They got a five-month-year-old son, and he not talking to her. Okay, some ain't right here. Although he cheated on multiple times during their marriage, she still loved him, and he still had love for her. They spotted one another when and attending the same party one evening at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. Her friends saw him there, too, and asked her to go talk to Notorious. Although she admitted to see him too, she also admitted she was letting pride get in the way of her walking up to him and saying hi, at least. However, one of B.I.G.'s people came up to her and said that Biggie sent him over to her. Biggie sent him over to tell her hi and to say what's up to her. She told the, her she told a friend and part of his entourage to say the same thing back to her former husband. Not long after leaving the party, Evans heard about a nearby shooting that involved Biggie Small. She immediately stepped into wife mode. <laughs> you ain't even speak to this nigga, and now you step into wife mode? Yeah, that bag. Stepped into that bag mode and went straight to the hospital to find out that he had passed away. She had to identify his body since she was still married to him. She also took on the big responsibility of Cone's mother to let her know the painful news about her only son. That's not true. I thought D-Rock did that. Evans played a big role in planning his funeral as well as his, bur his burial and even worked alongside P. Diddy at writing and performing the song they played tribute to B.I.G. called I'll Be Missing You in 1997. Wow. 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 Last time they was together, it was in December. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Christmas is December 31st, 25th. If they spent their last time together, December, January, 
February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Could she, can you have a baby at 10 months? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. I don't know. Ten months. That's forty weeks. Somebody say if you're a liar, yeah. <laughs> I can't with y'all, motherfuckers, boy. Hey. I hey I so I look at CJ I see big face too but that's because I might be conditioned to you can see something that's there that ain't there how many times you look at a cloud and you see a fucking face in it <laughs> That cloud right there, that looked like Tupac. Yeah, okay. He definitely don't have any big features. Like, I, I swear, man, I, I, I never, I never even questioned it. That would be some fuck. Yo, I, hey, let me tell you something. There are many women that would have knew that wasn't his and Big being, she was married to him and he got killed. And knowing all the money that you are about to inherit, you know how many other women would have been wouldn't say nothing neither. What? It's chicks out here getting child support of kids they know ain't theirs, and they just getting child support. And I know at that time he was with Charlie. Anyway, And you know when Big stopped messing with uh, Faith? At that Philly show, when he found out, when the Hit Him Up came out. Remember he uh, when he busted in looking for, for Faith in the, in the Notorious movie? That, 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 that shit was dead then. Fuck, they might have, you know how nigga dip and dabble, but December?
that was y'all spent y'all last Christmas together. You ain't gonna forget, you ain't gonna mix up a Christmas date. Who who gonna mix up Christmas? You're not gonna forget y'all y'all last time together, especially if it was Christmas. Christmas, Thanksgiving, your New Year's. You're not gonna forget that. So she she saying that she knew what she was saying. She just ain't know the baby's gonna pop out at 10 months later. <laughs> Happy life after death, big. This is this is one for the books. Seeing Diddy House get raided. And this is just the beginning. Y'all going to see so many celebrities, tight-lipped, absent on Instagram. So Todd's son played Biggie in the Biggie movie. <laughs> That might be another reason why motherfuckers think that they that that he look like big too. Man, like I said, Faith, CJ, Tiana, Miss Wiles, please forgive me. If, if you know if I'm wrong, y'all did DNA test this, that, and third. But Lord have mercy, boy. The math ain't mathing. The math is not mathing. Man, the math ain't mathing. They saying that uh, Justin and uh, Christian King Combs, they being uh, they took them in. They not charged with anything right now. They just being questioned. They could be questioned for hours, but um, hopefully they were smart enough to say nothing and ask for an attorney, and hope that they dad sent an attorney there to um, make sure they don't say anything to incriminate themselves and don't answer no questions without an uh, attorney present. But uh, choke no joke, I'm going to bed, man. You know, all my people over in Great Britain on the other side of the water, they up at work. They at the coolest right now. It's damn near 10 a.m. over there. They over there talking about, you know, Puffy, Puffy get arrested over there, old chum. Pass the crumpets. Joke, no joke. Y'all already know, man. This is just the beginning. I told y'all about the gay boule. It's about to be exposed. This is just the beginning. Watch everybody that be around Puff start being quiet. Watch. Remember when R. Kelly, when it was R. Kelly, everybody had an opinion. Selena Johnson had something to say. Tyrese had something to say. Tank had something to say. Even Charlamagne with allegations against him, he had something to say. Did he? You're going to be like, you're going to see. See no evil. Hear no evil. Speak no evil. Ain't going to be nothing but monkeys out there. <laughs> Chug, no joke, I'm out. Hit that like button before you go. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe, all right? Make sure y'all get the Hip Hop Nuke. It's the Tunnel Documentary on Amazon, Apple, Tubi, Stash. You can watch it here on Stash on YouTube. For free, if you haven't seen it yet, just go to Stash, the Hip Hop Nucleus, all right? Choke no joke. Y'all already know, man. I'm out.
choke, no joke. Jack Graham. Yeah, now. Choke, no joke. Jack Graham. Yeah. This what ATL in New York sound like. Let's go. Y'all hating ass niggas, I see y'all. Show get busy, that's why I got the crown. Hate in the air. You clowns, I see the envy that you breathe, jealousy. What you need is your own damn hustle. Stop worrying about mine. Nigga, I'm popping cause I put in time. Came out modeling, camera in hand. Still get busy with the mic in hand. Streets pulled out, niggas got sprayed. Niggas turn on you when they see you get paid. The intimidation in your face. Where's the love? What's taking place? You want my gold and my ducats. Cause my money overflowing out of buckets. Shot him in public, made people holler. Scar on his face for the money and the power. I'm the choker. Choker. The truth in the industry made me the choker. Choker. The truth in the industry made me the The game at me fool got in was young So talent made you rich, damn was dumb More to make, cake from crumbs You gotta be sweet, G or native tongue My heartbeat went into overload When Larry tried to turn me into a mole Told me show my curly to the CEO I didn't think it's funny so his jaw hit the floor And grabbed that chair that broke his back then realize that's a hate attack Harassment comes assault, you in the maze No way out, like Puff and Mace Touch me, tease me, I catch a case Nigga, you ain't straight as your poker face Father law guard in that game I fold This sun don't tick, demon time don't hold I'm the Choker 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 the truth in the industry made me the choker. 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 The truth in the industry made me the choker. Choker. The truth in the industry made me the choker. Choker. On the ones and twos, choker. What y'all want to do? I'm here now. Eat a wall, stand up. Shout out to the bomb squad. Uh, uh. Choke, no joke. You already know. <laughs> y'all know I love that cooch. You know who this is. I love that cooch. That's uh -huh. Huh. Yeah. It's the A thing. Clean cooch. Let's go. Yo, it's up. My nuts when I wake up. Got morning wood and I just bust one. In my hog and knee. I'm Ron Osley. Between the sheets. And she want to ski. And just shout with me with what I thought was pee. She rolled the D. Her water broke B. Not pregnant, but baptized me. I'm down for more love, but change the sheet. She said, please, I want more. Next thing I know, matches dripping the floor from her juices. Oral had me stoned, had a Korean and Medusa at one. And when I look in the eyes, between her thighs, I tell you no lie, and shit won't buy. I rob and take it for me to taste it. Red lobster, pussy, biscuit, freshly baked. Uh, eat that coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. Cooch. I eat her coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. Cooch. Suck my nuts when I wake up. Got morning wood and I just bust one. In my hog and knee, I'm Ron Osley. Between the sheets, and she want to ski and just shout with me with what I thought was pee. She rolled the D, her water broke B. Not pregnant, but baptized me. I'm down for more love, but change the sheet. She said, please, I want more. Next thing I know, matches dripping the floor.
floor from her juices. Oral had me stoned, had a Korean and Medusa at one. And when I look in her eyes, between her thighs, I tell you no lie, ain't shit won't buy. I rob and take it for me to taste it. Red lobster, pussy biscuit, freshly baked. Uh, eat that coochie all night. She spray my face like Shook Sprite. I love her. Joke out here in DR, my man Delvin. See him? Yeah. <laughs> in Dominican Republic. Alright? Yeah. We here. Yeah. Yeah. Joke, no joke. Primo, you ain't wanna give me no beat, so I'm stealing one. Take it personal. You know you my guy, Primo. Love you. You gonna give me a beat after this one. I never thought that you would cry at me, go against me, and backstab me. Third eye is strong, word is bond. Put you on the fakes, and now you won. I gave you support, and you play me. For those who play with butt, yeah, I'm talking. Breakfast club, revolt, whatever. All I know is birds of a feather hang with those that they hate. Once the realness, now you fake, and I see through you. What you gon' do when they book you and your duke shoot? I know you think I'm expose you. This ain't no threat, take it personal. Choke, no joke. 2023, it's on me. You hear me? 2023 is on me. They say, why I don't come around the game? Cause all y'all dudes undercover gay. And I don't play those fucking games. Yo, stop the track, I'm fucking Slay. Rest in peace, K Slay, man. Let's get to the next one. Choke, no joke. Yeah. You know what Choke, it is. Choke, no joke. You know what it is. Let's go, let's go. 2020, rich niggas, money funny. Yeah. We got killer bees, and I lost my honey. My little sex master, yeah, she was a distraction. To my mathematics, then Corona happened. Yeah. The government capping on what's really happening. Rock Nation signing niggas that's out here ratting. And Jay's the captain what? of the ship? Ain't this a bitch you keep his sign and snitch? We lost Andre and Rich, life's a bitch Can't have a funeral, no matter if you rich or poor Overpopulated at morgues Funeral homes, bodies all on the floor No food in stores, no me no more These the last days if you never prayed Have faith, all sort of illicit days Yo, it's tough when you see Puff rock a hoodie with his baby mama hanging from a cross, you lost. Damn, you told the CEO on the gram he was a handsome man. Oh. That's sexual harassment in front of millions of fans. You made five on the scram like Sunday Letitia. Uh. Joseph don't leave, Mary and Jesus. Uh. Sides, self pleasing, some sneak thieves. If we were kids, you call them flat leavers. They use you, don't need you. It's birth you, they see you. Cross you, then be ya, curve you and flee ya Niggas wanna be you until they see you They idolize you, like you in the case Nigga, you know who got punched in the face In the A on stage, or any place A nigga like me, never retire like Mace And don't even care if the church is the escape Last real nigga alive, amongst your face Y'all big bad, no frost in the my face Come out, Epstein flight log is out uh -huh. And tell us, what that spirit cooking about? Head to head with a satanist and niggas in doubt homies. The power of the dark side block me out That's why I'm blacking, get it in any sport trick Everyone That's why up. you the non-factor 6 9 keep acting, yeah. like you ain't acting yeah. You wasn't flagging, <laughs> in the court yapping <laughs> That tough guy on the gram was just blabbing I'm the king of New York, at y'all niggas I'm laughing. At the plaza, it's the king of New York. Choke, no joke. We here now. You know what it is. Eat a wall, stand up. Yo, I'm back, y'all. Yeah. 
I just seen the craziest, craziest, craziest story just now, yo. Hold on, let me bring it up here. Shout out to everybody in here. Anybody in here from Boyle and B-more? Bridge just collapsed in Baltimore, man. I got to call my peoples. And it was people on the bridge. Breaking news just into CNN, a large ship has collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, causing major damage. Video obtained by CNN shows the bridge collapsing into the water below. We have no information yet on deaths or injuries. Maryland authorities say all traffic is being detoured around the area. Again, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has collapsed after it was hit by a large ship and we will of course bring you more information as it comes into us here at CNN. Yo, what is going on out here, bro? Like, how does a whole boat just crash into a bridge, bro? Like, come on, man. That got to be some terrorists. That got to be terrorists. ship has collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, causing major damage. Video obtained by CNN shows the bridge collapsing into the water below. We have no information yet on deaths or injuries. Maryland authorities say all traffic is being detoured around the area. Again, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has collapsed after it was hit by a large ship and we will of course bring you more information as it comes into us here at CNN. Lord have mercy, bro. <coughs> what the F is going on out here, man? This is crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm telling you, this is that man. What idiot would do that? Like go straight for the thing, bro. You tell me they didn't see that. What the nigga was smoking a blunt? Like, what, what was he doing? Sniffing coke? Wait a minute. So you tell me there's no Coast Guard, there's no nothing that is watching to make sure, hey, buddy, yo, you know this ain't your jurisdiction. You too big of a boat to go this way. Hey, nothing? You got to be kidding me. Yo, you got to be kidding me, bro. You got to be kidding me. Oh, my God. Yo, you can see the trucks on there. There's cars on there. Lord have mercy, bro. Y'all see the lights? Look at the lights on the bridge. Right here. Watch. You see the lights? Going down? Look, right here. Look at the cars. You see him? Oh, shit. Lord have mercy. That got to be some scary ass movie shit. Look at all those cars on there. Oh, my God, bro. That motherfucker gonna have a multiple murder charge on they ass. Like, oh my God, they gonna, yo, these motherfuckers is about to get, if they didn't die, they gonna wish they did. What highway is that? The Francis Scott Key Bridge. What highway is that? The Francis Scott. Six ninety five. Been over that one before. A 
Lord have mercy, bro. Look at this bridge, man. How big that is. Oh, some they, uh whoa, the people that gotta commute over that that make that commute easy, y'all gonna have a long way to go now, boy. Go around. Whoa. Lord, y'all gonna have a long way to go around. How many years is going to take for them to build this bridge back? Yeah, that's a lot of people that could fit on there. In both directions, too. That's a long way that shit collapsed that fast. That's a lot of people, bro. Lucky it wasn't rush hour. Took them five years to build that. God, man. Oh, my God. I hope they get the rescue crew out there fast, bro. This is going to be a day to remember. That's a four lane bridge, too. This is crazy, man. Will Smith pulled over today, smacked with a speeding ticket. I don't know what's going on, on March 25th, boy. Vince Young got knocked out. It's time to go to bed. It's time to go to bed. Y'all children, take yourselves to bed, man. Shout out everybody on over on the other side of the water. Y'all have a good work day. We'll catch up with y'all later. You know y'all in the future. 
<laughs> All right. It is what it is. Choke no joke. I'm out. Choke no joke. No joke. You know what it is. You know what it is. Tell this 10-year-old boy I'm getting some new dick or something. Check. Yeah. Choke no joke. Know what it is. This go out to the Desperate Housewives in New York, Atlanta, Texas, California, Miami, Mississippi. I never thought in my life Not me I fall for another man's wife Oh God I know that it sounds trite I'm caught up with a desperate housewife yeah. I never thought in my life Not me I fall for another man's wife Oh God I know that it sounds trite I'm caught up with a desperate housewife It was quick how it happened We was just chatting Had a lot in common I kept her laugh in a department in which a man was lacking. He was the king of the ship. So my I became captain. My swag on platinum. All my gold DJ smacked it. Then phone sex had happened. Things went left. I call it interest in sex. Something like little Kim and you have. We knew if we met, it would be electric. Then the day came and we met. It was beyond my dream. A dream so sweet it made me scream. It was like a dream, knew why he made a queen I wanted to find Marty McFly and use that time machine Run up in the church, create a scene Object to that wedding and give him my ring Like, uh. I never thought in my life Not me I fall for another man's wife Oh God I know that it sounds trite I'm caught up with a desperate housewife yeah. I never thought in my life, not me, I fall for another man's wife. Oh God, I know that it sounds trite. I caught up with a desperate housewife. I fell harder than a mother, my number one lover. Yo, under them covers was like no other. Had everything in common. I used to love her until he bugged her. Bitch, motherfucker. Device in the whip, had to call it quits. Hit us like a brick. We both sick. Now she got a dilemma, like Kelly the kids. I'm calm, wish I never met the chick. Missing her seafood and our trips. Sex in the soul house, we did that shit. Sexing on the tent, we risked that shit. We both freaky as fuck, I miss my chick. Well, never mind, dare to take him off of mine. Kindred spirits, just the wrong time. Get divorced, you can hear my line. Until I repent, it's next lifetime, like. I never thought in my life, not me. I fall for another man's wife. Oh God, I know that it sounds trite. I'm caught up with a desperate housewife. Yeah. I never thought in my life, not me. I fall for another man's wife. Oh God, I know that it sounds trite. I'm caught up with a desperate housewife. Joke, no joke. You already know. It's that south side of Eden Wall flow. We out of here.
sound back, 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 back. Niggas and go. Yeah, let's go. Choke, no joke. It's for all the projects in the world. When they bite that chicken, this is when the players get knocked. Cause it's hot out, the sexy show out, glowing with the back glass on the mouth. She see you with the next chick, then she dumb out, hustlers dumb out, just for nothing. Busting for attention, just dumbing. Cause we know y'all ain't busting nothing. Life's a box of chocolates, you're riding a pipe, playing the bench, kids on the fence, watch your popo, chase prints, don't dismiss your brethren, for dumb shit, keep it gangsta, no shit where you live, 12 one right up in your crib, you never been nowhere, where else could you live, that's gangsta boo coming through, throwing it up, fucking his muffler up, scraping the concrete with Willie so sweet, he got his scores by the chief of police from 233rd Laconia to Gun Hill Road. Got knocked in intel like Joe. Stay the hell. Don't follow those cats. The niggas that be on the ground. Tell for what they doing. <laughs> Choco Joe, you know what it is. Yo, y'all niggas with a stay DL. Down low. Stop flossing, man. What you, you, what you just. You just want them to just come and get you. Learn from our mistakes, man. That's what this is about. Learn from mistakes. Choke no joke. Let's go. You already know. Make a love. Let's go. My aim was enlightened. Drop jewels on you. I'm jealous, I ain't got cheddar like you I'm the dude to a game you got school Was a local cat, snatch you when I made moves yeah. I'm paranoid and preaching, you, you was sleeping Knew you was sneak deep and couldn't see us beefing Learn from mistake, don't show I got cake And press a nigga to rob me, bitch in my face Get knocked by the fence, lay up four by eight Ass so busy flossing, ain't thinking about Jake Loose, yapping, they wiretapping Video taping, your ways to act Front like Tom's hard, two door garage, ice like Liberage, with no damn jaw, without a reasonable doubt. You think you Jay Z with your platinum jewelry? He got a job, B. You shining on doctors with four degrees, laughing because I'm broke, I'm broke on the streets. Stay DL, BDL and Sal. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Stay DL, BDL and Sal. We not dolo for cash, you go solo. Thought I was your man, shot me down like Manolo. Thought I was your partner when you played me was whack. No niggas dust that I wouldn't flip like that. What gives? See your man struggle while you live? That's some shit, struggling. Give you the kicks, used to stick for gooses. Warm when we pump deuces, break night in the jacks, trying to see millions like Brewster. You don't act like you used to, I'm the dude. When niggas was friends, like, yo, 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 yo. I wet you like McClain for those who claim to be pain. The game 
game of death, that's what you get when got game. Got ill with automatics, we're never static. You carry had niggas, put one in your cabbage. Fear, don't have it, you fill me with laughter. In OG and C, then I'm original, gonna clap her. Like Dan get dapper, see a mill be Casper. They trade the doctor, the math for math. With your pockets, cop the ice locket. She somewhere in Houston, you blew like a rocket. Her seed was bait, through the line she caught it. Gave her all that loot, she couldn't afford it. Frame to them bitches, y'all feeling him. Blue puff in your face, daddy, all about Benjamin. Remember me, I'm your friend to the end. Like Chucky, used to slay bitches like Buffy. Thinking why they cuff me, thinking the luxuries you had. In the cell with other willies, you brag. I pushed the big bed for 20 year trim. Went in the club, Chris for all my men. Sitting across the bar, what's up, star? Back to reality, you back in bars. You chose not to listen, had the age class listen. Knew the rules of the game, you played yourself on position. Stay DL, be DL and L. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Stay DL, be DL and L. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Stay DL, be DL and L. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Yo, son, yo, son, yo, son, the sun is me, yo. I see. You ain't noticed me, yo. I see, so all these man. diamonds and stuff, yo. How can I? Fat lie? diamond ring I got, yo. Yo, what you talking about, yo? yo these diamonds, yo. yo. You know what I'm saying? Yo. yo. I got $35,000 on me right oh, now. Oh, my God. Nigga, I can show you the money right now. I can show you the money. No. Stay the don't follow those cats. Choke those jokes. You already know. Let's go out the gray go. Now I'm out the game. Feel good, not pitching in the hood. Uh, and I really don't think I could. Uh, go back to selling crack and stashing them packs in my ass. I maintain weekly money the same. And now nah, I don't go through them games. Niggas testing my brain with them triple beans filled with change. Pot crack, grams in the drain. Get hit with the fake exchange. Like bacon soda flour. After being on Broadway for hours. Getting knocked, being back at start. Niggas testing if I got hard. Pushing me to pop some shots. Just stop the ball before that start. With the binocs, give description to cops. Why they try to tear us apart with that good cop, bad cop? I ain't going for the game, he ain't tell you a thing. Your partner's with him, saying the same. You tighten them cuffs till you see veins. Stop fucking yanking them down. They might fuck you if you ain't sane. And nigga never sniff cocaine. And I don't care what game or part of the area you claim. Gray Scarface, you must be insane. Nigga, Tony fucked the boy's dame. His right hand man, he's slain to get his back blown out the game. Do it on the low, let nobody know. No pillow talk to home. And if he step on your toes, don't bust a blame. Cause everybody will know. Or get out the game. They say that change is good. It's a lot of stress in the hood. And I know if you could, you would. The game, but you stuck in that time. Wear the nigga in public like shine. For a witness to drop a dime for self defense. Do a dime. Celebs doing time. Mike Vick on the child line. Even Kobe. Jason Williams gauge. Kick like Shinobi. Little Kim for perjury. Uh, you know you done fucked up, right? You know you done fucked up, right? When it's late night, make sure it's packed tight. And when, when you take, take those flights, never eye the Jake in sight. And shake them fuckers when they dead to right. Uh, make it a fifth go rumble because of stick of trouble.
glass to your gap for a cat boy in fact with some crap that don't involve you for some dudes that don't love you all they want to do is pawn you until you go down and don't do shit for you when you lock down or even when you touch down but it tell you to go to the pound the same block that gave you a pound years in the pen now you living again what my state are you in when you back it for 10 and you was just waiting for a team to come home to relive it again entrapment should be a sin the way they reel us in we'll roll us to a revolving door to bring us in this shit is insane the game is insane the game will fuck with your brain that's why i'm out the game yeah just get out the game man I know they told y'all, there's only two ways out, jail and death. Nah, just get out, nigga. Just get out, man. It's easy. Just walk away, nigga. If they care about you, they'll let you go. If you in the game, and you want to go and get a better life, and they won't let you walk away, what do that say? Get out the game, nigga. You wanna sleep easy, nigga? Look at these rap niggas, nigga. Now you wanna be the, the next rapper? Trapper, clapper? Federal indictment rapper? Huh? I keep telling y'all niggas, man, get out the game, man. Joe go joke. Grego, you already know. The beast is chemical, baby. That's why I'm out the game. Don't follow those cats. Oh, yeah. My man had to come through and make sure it went through. Y'all niggas is in trouble. Choke, no joke. I ain't no joke to mixtape. We here now. You already know. Let's go. Choke chillin', got away from them billin'. Ain't shit really changed though, I'm still that villain. I'm making money with rhyme, fuck black on black crime. Beef and money don't mix, like Muslims and swine. I'm talking milk, penicillin, y'all be illin'. Y'all be thinking y'all killers, with y'all school fits grillin'. Kick that bullshit to me, y'all be wet though like Bruce Lee. And Brandon, and Hearst, on the highway to heaven. Man, you making mad threats and stuck in one section. I'm OBP like Naughty. Make a connection Talking under your breath Get you something you don't need Two fully loaded Macs Filled up with heat Nigga, you sweeter than 30 days for a body Pop shit to these niggas See me walk by me But I ain't looking for no beef I don't eat bologna But I bring a whole cow If you run up on me Shiesty Try me and hype me To peel your wig back Like 10 cent icy Bring it, stop bluffing, I got you threats, they mean nothing I respond, like Bond, I come through, I'm bombing Playing bodegas, flipping Montega You tan in the Jacks, I tan in Jamaica Vega, went bust if he raped ya Your chick got blazed up, hit it like Jada Why you blew up a pager, had to breathe like Vader Your star at war with the lightsaber, I'm here to lyrically tear you rare, nigga, you a spear. I jack you up, now you out of here. Throw me on the 600. Now fuck your nigga humming. Blowing down a half with a bad bitch blunted. I take it there. Y'all niggas don't want it. Y'all niggas don't want it. Y'all niggas don't want it with no joke. Who you thought it be? Represent the NYC. Bring it on if you niggas want some of me. Have y'all niggas feeling it like Jay Z? Uh, no joke. Who you thought it be? Represent the NYC. Bring it on if you niggas want some of me. Bronx King like the L O R D F I N E double S C. Uh. And that bullshit y'all do, y'all niggas don't stress me. Oh yeah, and you already know, eating war what it is. Uh. Choke no 
joke. I ain't no joke. The mixtape. We here now. Supreme bigger figure, big cap, the war in. The Club King. The DJ Johnny Walker Red. MC Frank Jigger, the celebrity's choice. Sean Brophy, sound engineer. Choke No Joke, legendary videographer. Sterling Cox, I was the head of security. Alpha Grinion. My name is V. Omega. Big G. It's Ben Rock from the legendary Naughty by Nature. Styles P. The Ghost, LOX, D Block. Tex, Smith and Wesson. LB Fan, Mr. Cheeks. The Cool, the DJ, the Red Alert. Kid Capri. The Tunnel was a hip hop movie. It was the epicenter. It was the domain, the temple. It was the mecca. Nothing was that melting pot of hip hop that kept the paradigm going. It's almost like what Rucker did for street basketball. The Tunnel was that of music industry. My Sunday ritual going to the Tunnel was, I'm telling you, your ass better be there. We just pretty much did push ups. We had to drink a couple bottles of Hennessy, go get smoked, leave the jewelry and watches at home. Before you even get to the tunnel, you gotta get on the block. You started from 11th Avenue, and when you got to that door, the search procedures was no other. First time I ever heard of take your shoes off, open your mouth, was in the tunnel. It was damn near anything but a full cavity search. Security at the tunnel was no joke. The beatdowns did happen. Some of them, if you had that chain out, that shit was leaving with one of them niggas. We had a handful of cats. When we were taking you out, they were digging in your pockets. The code check at the tunnel was crazy because you ain't know if you was gonna get your shit back. Sometimes the bloops happen where you might not get your coat. A lot of boys wanted to get their girls some fur coats, you know? So, I mean, it was free. The ball was always on till out the tunnel. You might get fake alcohol. Bartenders might have got counterfeit. The dance floor was always rocking. It looked like a video all the time. The tunnel had a very unique situation at the bathroom. It was co-ed. The bathroom was Solomon Gomorrah. I was like this, looking, trying to look past the dudes like when they was going in the urinal. The tunnel was a one-stop shop. They had food, they had alcohol, drugs. I saw weed the tub. It was just oozing money. Backstage is like the club amongst the club. That's where all the so-called stars who was scary to be in the crowd, that's where they hung out at. The dopest things about the tunnel for me to remember is hearing my records get played up in there. The top maybe of all time tunnel banger. Or well, anything bad boy. Every biggie record, any shit by whole. Shook was bananas in there. Nori Capone, that bang bang. And he up. Any one of Busted joints. Wild Out would actually start a fight. The best performance I've ever seen, Jay-Z performed in front of the DJ booth. The DJ booth was bouncing like a ball. Snoop and Dre. When Dre was there. DMX, get at me, dog. The king of the tunnel was Jay-Z. Bust around. DMX is the king. Queen of the tunnel. Mary J. Blige. Foxy and Lil' Kim. E. King of the tunnel, record label-wise, was Def Jam. It's bad boy. The best DJ at the tunnel was Flex. Big cap, all day. Flex was the break off the record. But he used to try to bully cap, like, don't spin this, because when I get here, I want to spin it. No, nigga, fuck wrong with you. What the tunnel did for artists is solidify their street music. That gave us a platform, set up Rough Riders, Rockefeller, Bad Boy, slew of other artists. The closing of the tunnel, it was kind of sad because that was a big piece of hip hop. So losing the tunnel was like a little kid losing Disney. A famous mosque closing down. I think when the tunnel closed, it was necessary. Niggas was coming to miss it. When you hear people, of the late 70s, I talked about Studio 54. The tunnel was the Studio 54 of hip hop. Choke no joke. It's been sweet, it's been love, but uh, I catch y'all on the morning workout, all right? See y'all in a few, one love. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for all the cash apps. I appreciate y'all. Please hit that like button. Before you go, hit that subscribe. If you're new here, you like how I do things, hit that subscribe. Come back and visit me sometime, all right? 
Choke No Joke, the name. Hit me up on Instagram at Choke No Joke Official right here. Hit me up on TikTok, Choke No, Real Choke No Joke. Snapchat, Real Choke No Joke. All right. Twitter, X, whatever it is, Instagram. I'm on all of them, man. Holla at your boy, man. If you're on Snapchat, get at me, man. I just got on Snapchat today. All right. Real Choke No Joke. One love.